All right, hello, welcome back. Uh, so last time we were talking about perfect coverings of chessboards. Chessboard, remember, is an eight by eight grid of squares. A domino is a two by one grid of squares. So does there exist a perfect covering of a chessboard? Well, yes, you could have four dominoes in the first column, four in the second, four in the third, etc. And there you go. That is, by example, we have proven that there exists a perfect covering of a chessboard. Now, when I say A, I'm not trying to say that there is necessarily only one. To say that there exists something uh, just means that there is at least one. Okay, so that language you have to sort of understand or agree with our convention that, uh, that, that what, all that's being asserted here is that there exists at least one. Um, we use the word unique. There, there, if I said there exists a unique perfect covering of a chessboard, that would mean that there is one and only one uh, perfect covering. Saying that there exists a perfect covering is more of a general statement. It just means uh, one exists, but it's making no claim about a second one, either pro or con. So uh, all we care about is the first one. Okay, so that's what we did last time. So now let's ask some other questions. For example, suppose you don't want to cover the entire chessboard. For example, what if I cross off the top left and the bottom left squares? And I say, I don't want to cover those two squares. I only want to cover the other 62 squares. Um, is there a way, does there exist a perfect covering with dominoes of the remaining squares of the chessboard? So think about it for a second. Okay, so probably um, many of you came up with the same solution. Uh, the answer is yes, there does exist a perfect cover. Um, you could put one domino over those two squares. You could put one domino to cover those two squares. Another one to cover those squares. And then for the remaining seven columns, you do exactly the same thing that we did last time. You put one in each column. Okay. Okay, so here is a very brief explanation of that solution. The answer is yes. You could put three dominoes in the first column and four in each subsequent column, and that will be a perfect covering. Okay, now let's get even more interesting. Let's ask a second question. What if one only crosses out the top left square of, of the chessboard. Does this board uh, have a perfect covering or does it not? Take a moment and think about that. See what you think the answer is. And go ahead and pause the video to really put some thought into it. Okay, I hope you took some time to think about it. You know, if you tr started with this board and you tried to cover up with dominoes, what would you do? What would your attempt be? Well, perhaps you would start by putting a few dominoes in the first column. Then you have that one square left over in the corner, so maybe you put some horizontally. And then maybe you would get the outer parts. That makes sense. Work your way in. So you can see we're kind of spiraling around trying to get the outer parts as much as possible. And every other time there's this square in the corner that's trapped, so we have to put, you know, we're kind of, our hands kind of forced for some of these moves. And as you get closer and closer, you're thinking, now oh, maybe this is gonna work out. But at that point, there's no way around it. See, in this attempt, we have one square left over at the, in the very middle that was not covered by a domino. And in fact, what we just saw happen is guaranteed to happen in some form, no matter how we would attempt the covering. We don't have to start by doing ho horizontal or vertical pieces the way we did. Uh, we could try another pattern, but we're always gonna be left with a single square at the end that is uncovered. So why would that be? Think about that. So here's the answer. Write it up. I'll write this one out as a proposition. If one crosses out the top left square of an eight by eight chessboard, 
the remaining squares, the answer, can not be perfectly covered. by dominoes. Okay, that's the answer. They cannot be perfectly covered by dominoes. <clears throat> Let's write out a little proof of why this would be the case. And the thinking of it, you, know, you should be thinking about the fact that there's always one left over. Well, why would that be the case? It's the case because the numbers don't work out, okay? Well, what does that mean? Well, think about it. I mean, if you have 64 squares, then you would need 32 dominoes to cover them all, right? Each one has two. If you have 63 squares, which we do have in this case, we have uh, just one square crossed off, so that, mean, that leaves 63 remaining squares. So why would 63 squares never have a perfect covering? Does it matter which square we crossed off? Just the fact that there are 63 left, that's the problem. Because with 63 squares, you'd have to have 31 and a half <laughs> dominoes if you're gonna perfectly cover it. But that's not allowed. You have to have an integer number of dominoes, a positive integer number of dominoes. So that's the point. So somehow we have to put that into words. So how should we do it? Well, you can basically say that. You can basically say if you have k dominoes, how many squares do you cover? 2k squares, okay? So if you have 63 squares, that's an odd number, how many dominoes would have to be covering it? Well, half that number, but that's not an integer, and that's the problem. Okay, so let's write that out. Since every domino covers two squares, and the dominoes are non-overlapping. Remember, that was the definition of a perfect covering from last time. We defined it to be non-overlapping, not hanging off the ends, anything like that. If one places k dominoes on the board, then they must cover 2k, 2 times k, squares. OK. And then there are a few ways you could proceed from here. You could simply note that uh, what would k have to be if 2k was equal to 63, which is the number of dominoes in our chess board. Or you could say, note that 2k uh, is always an even number. Uh, in next chapter, we're going to formally define even numbers to be numbers of the form 2k where k is an integer. Um, We'll get to those formal definitions later. Right now, we're just getting the flavor of the proofs. So that's one way to go about it. You could uh, use that formal definition uh, to say that the number of squares to in a covering must be an even number, but 63 is an odd, so it doesn't work out. That's a second way to do it. And you might come up with your own way to do it. There are many ways to phrase this main idea. Uh, I'll go with the second, the second way in, in, in this solution, but you can come up with your own way. Uh, many ways to, to express the same basic idea. Um, so in particular, since 2 times k is always an even number, Here, k is the number of dominoes, so it's an integer, right? k is not two and a half or pi or anything like that. k has to be an integer, which makes 2k uh, guaranteed to be an even number. Uh, since 2k is always an even number, 
a, uh, a perfect covering can only cover an even number of squares. Okay, so that's an important note. And that's important because in our chessboard with only one square removed, we have an odd number of squares. Thus, since the board has 63 squares, an odd number, it can not be perfectly covered. Okay, there you go, end of proof box. So, uh, that is the idea. And, uh, you know, something about this solution is it, you switch out 63 for any other odd number and the same exact proof works. That's kind of nice about it. Um, of course, many other proofs would, would also be just as generalizable, uh, but something to note. Okay, so there you go. Uh, the second question, what if we cross off uh, only one square like the top left one? Does a, perfect cover, does a perfect cover exist? Answer is no. But now, time for question three. Last time I teased you that one of my favorite math problems uh, is, was I was going to give it to you in this video. Well, question three is going to be that math problem. I've given this problem to many people in many different settings, you know, out at dinner, at a party, not a bed party problem, uh, and, uh, and it's often led to positive results. Okay, so let me uh, pause this video to get it set up. Psych, looks like this video is long enough, so I will push it to the next video. So next video, I will start off with one of my favorite problems.